All right, you're watching Tech Tapes, and for those of you who don't know, myself and my friend RJ are building a robotic exoskeleton named Marvy, the man's and remote robotic vehicular exoskeleton. This will be used in disaster relief situations to save lives, as it can lift up to 1,500 pounds using both arms. It will be great for pulling people from rubble or just um, moving things around and also construction. But I'm going to show you how to make the force version of the control finger. This is just the base part, uh, um, the tip is going to be just still being designed, but this part I believe is finalized. I'm going to have this printed in aluminum as soon as I have enough money to do that. Um, and the only modification I would make is to get a few of the 3 8 inch heat shrink tubing and slide over the end of the flex sensor and this printer part right here. And that should hold that a little more security. Other than that, it's great, it's adjustable in girth and length, it'll fit anyone, unlike, um, I guess this is almost version 2. And that should be it. Once this thing is done, um, everything I use to make it, including the part itself, will be available for a kit, if any of you want to follow. And the model is open source on Thingiverse. So, without further ado, let's get going. All right, so I just received the fourth iteration of part number three from Marvy's control glove. This was printed in a shapeway, strong and flexible material. Everything seems to be well except for the copious amount of powder left inside the flex sensor slot, but this was easily cleaned out with a drill bit. Make the pieces for links adjustment, measure off 130 millimeters of 364 inch stainless steel aircraft cable and cut. You do this twice. Using a sharpie in either a caliper or ruler, mark the cable every 11.8 millimeters down its entire length. Take one of these single barrel copper ferrules and slide it to one end of your stainless steel aircraft cable and crimp. Remember to start from the middle of the crimp and move outwards. Then rotate your crimpers 90 degrees and crimp again. This still forms a good connection and rounds out the ferrule in order to allow it to fit through your printed part. Proceed to slide 10 additional ferrules onto your cable. Crimp the end one exactly in the same manner as we did the first. Then align each ferrule with the marks we made earlier and crimp. I would suggest just crimping once in the middle initially, then after all the ferrules are crimped, go back and round them all out with further crimping. Now you have completed half of the finger adjustments. Do this again and you have both pieces. We shall now continue to tap out the holes on the printed part. Tap out the one on the end and the two for the links adjustment with three millimeter taps. You can now screw in a three millimeter male heim joint. Cut several lengths of small gauge wire. These can usually be salvaged from old electronics. Here I am using 30 gauge. Strip them back and solder one to each of the two leads of the flex sensor, being careful not to short out the leads in the process. After you've done that, you can use either a candle or any other adequate heat source for this next step. Slide two small pieces of heat shrink tubing over the wires you just soldered and shrink using the heat. Next, slide one 
quarter inch internal diameter piece of heat shrink tubing just slightly longer than the flex sensor over the entire sink and shrink that as well. This will help protect your flex sensor from wear. Then you take two more pieces of the quarter inch internal diameter heat shrink tubing and slides them to the end of the flex sensor with the wires. Each of these pieces should be a little under an inch long or around 25 millimeters. These will stiffen the end of the flex sensor, permitting it to only flex on the sensitive portion. For marking the bottom of the flex sensor with a silver sharpie to prevent you from accidentally installing it upside down, it is a good idea to test the sensor with a 200k ohm setting on a multimeter. When you flex it, the resistance should go up relatively the same amount as you see here. Insert the wires through the slot for the flex sensor and then using a pair of tweezers pour them into the cavity of the vibration motor. As you can see this can be a bit tricky but once you get them both through loop them around insert them into the hole again but this time, make sure that they exit out of the exit hole on the front of the part. Give these wires a slight pull in order to draw the flex sensor up into its slot. Then wiggle it in as much as possible. Install the vibration motor into its cavity and run the wires out the same hole as you did for the flex sensor. Once the vibration motor is securely in place, strip back the two leads coming from it and then extend them with another two of the wires that we got earlier. Solder them on and heat shrink. Once you've done this, take all four wires and run them up through the small hole on the side of the wire loom and pour them all out as far as you can through the back. In the future, the wires from the front of the finger will join into these and they will all come out together. Label the wires so that you don't accidentally mix them up and then grind down the little excess portion on the end of a hose clamp. Insert it into the printed part as shown. This will allow the control glove to fit fingers of any girth. Alright, now we can take the two pieces that we made earlier for links adjustment and insert them as shown. These will attach to the front of the finger once that part has been designed and printed. To adjust the finger links, you simply slide them in as many places as needed and then tighten down one of these M3 times 10 bolts in between a pair of copper ferrules. Attach the entire assembly to your finger by tightening down the hose clamp with either a screwdriver or small thumb ratchet. The flex sensor will follow your finger by sliding in and out of a slot on the fingertip piece once that has been printed. The heim joint on the back of the finger serves the same purpose as the little hole on the original prototype from the first video. This will allow you to control two joints of the finger by simply flexing your finger in a different way.